Hey guys, and welcome to day one of the Resilience Program. I'm super stoked um, to start this program with you guys. I want to take a few seconds or a few minutes, I guess, of this video to explain, you know, what the whole program entails and why we designed it, and then we'll dive into exactly what today looks like for the programming. Um, but essentially, every day is going to have a little bit of three things, three main core pillars that we we use here at Spacebar, and it's going to be breath movement and repair or recovery. So the reason I said in like the posts and the messages before that you should keep doing your other gym exercises is because our part, our form of movement for this program at least, um, is, is very minimal. It is not a super intense workout. It's always just two movements and it's done in a, in a super set form. So you do one, then the other rest, one, then the other rest for five rounds. Um, and they're all, they're either, you know, hyper-focused on stability, balance, agility, uh, things like that, you know, getting again back to those like, those main, main aspects of overall functionality in your body. And then the breath work as well, which I'll go over right now with you guys. That's the first part of each day, except for when we get to the end, we mix it up a little bit. But, um, you know, breath work can be done or viewed in many different ways. And you know, there's, there's different sides of the spectrum. Some people do breath work for strictly meditative purposes. And then there's people that do it strictly for, you know, being able to hold their breath longer underwater because they're surfers or free divers. And, you know, we, we try to find that middle ground where we're doing it based on science. But of course, you know, we hope that you can get into the zone enough while you're doing it, that it is a meditation because all you're doing for, X amount of time is focusing on your breath, which is very meditative, and your brain can really can really take a nice nice break there to focus on yourself and what your body actually feels like when you breathe, which is something we do all day, every day, and we don't really give that much attention or love to. And then the repair and recovery aspect. So the the main thing we're doing on that baseline here is working our way up to a cold shower. There's tons of benefits to cold showers. One of them being your immune system, which is huge right now with everything going on. Um, it's also great for your hair and your skin. It's great for so many, even the mental part of overcoming the fact that you're sitting in something cold. Well, I guess standing in this sense, unless you sit in the shower, which is fine. Um, but it's, it, you know, pushing yourself through something you know doesn't feel super awesome at first, just like the way exercise doesn't. Um, but yeah, overall muscle recovery, anything along those lines, it's super beneficial. And there'll be further posts and writing about, you know, all the, the benefits of that. But if you want to know more as these things are coming out, of course, you can always message me. Um, but we also do stretching and foam rolling and stuff. So the only piece of equipment you need is a foam roller. It is ideal if you don't have a foam roller. On the few days that we're doing foam rolling for recovery, just message me and let me know. I'll give you a different a different program to do that day instead of the foam rolling. But it'll be about 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes of breath work, 10 to 15 minutes of movement, and 10 to 15 minutes of recovery with the shower buildup at the end. You know, you'll see on the program that we very, very slowly work our way up. Um, it's not like we're gonna just like jump into it. And I guess I'll explain that part right now too. I, in the program, you'll see that, you know, it's, it, you always just do it at the end of your regular shower. So take a normal shower and then at the very end, when you're done and you're about to get out, it starts very slowly with just turning it slightly cold. You know, it's like just below warm. And we work our way up on time. And then after that, up to a colder temperature, then time again, colder temperature, time again, until we get to the cold shower for three minutes. So those are the three parts of the program. And that's what every day will look like uh, for three days a week for these, these four weeks. The main goal, you know, would be to improve your, your breathing mechanics. Again, I'll go, we're about to start with that. And the other one would be working your way up to getting comfortable with a cold shower a few days a week. If you are someone that exercises, it is so, so, so good for you. If you are someone that doesn't exercise regularly, it's still so beneficial for you, just like the breath work is. And um, the other one being overall truly, truly functional, like I was saying earlier, being able to lift up something heavy, but also still being able to throw a baseball and still being, over to, still being able to jump over a fence and being able to balance on one leg and comfortably walk up a set of stairs without feeling winded. You know, there are so many just like 
little, little, like they're small, but very, very important and crucial parts of your health and little goals that really mean a lot and will truly make a difference in like your day to day life and activities that you have. So let's hop into the breath work. Um, I'm really going to try to keep this video under 15 minutes as will be the longest one, which is because I'm explaining the program. So today we're just going to go over the healthy breathing mechanics and then we're doing a protocol called um, balanced breathing where we just this, we match our inhale with our exhale length and we don't do any breath holds or anything but we're gonna start with um, taking your bolt score so this is to be done on on your own um, have a timer of some sorts on your phone or anything and this is mainly to sh tell me what your current co2 tolerance is I'm not going to tell you what the ideal score is because I don't want you to cheat because it is already a, a tough not that I think you're a cheater but it is a tough test to already take kind of and pay attention so after you get your score message me and then I will tell you where you're at and what numbers you should use moving forward for all the breathing protocols including the balanced breathing today um, so the bolt score is going to be how long you can make your exhale last before you feel the urge to take an inhale and the main word usage there is feel the urge to take an inhale. So we are not holding our breath as long as we can. You're just holding until you feel like your body tells you like, hey man, you know, take a breath. And that's when you stop the timer and you just take a breath. You go back to normal. So this is not a long hold. Um, but what the bolt score, again, t tell me what your score is and I'll let you know what it means. And then um, I'll be able to give you the protocols moving forward. But I'll just do it with you guys right now. So if I was going to take my own bolt score, let's say I had a timer, okay. Um, I'll take one full inhale, full exhale. Once all my air is empty, start. stop because I felt the urge to take a breath so I took a breath so that was just when my body was like hey man you know breathe and that can sometimes look like a twitch or you have the, the urge to swallow it, it does feel kind of challenging to like just because you obviously want to be like I can go longer but try to just the minute you feel like you have to take a breath take a breath um, not have to when you just would naturally take a breath um, so that's your bolt score so that's what you'll do um, to get your first score and then that's something you can, you can take daily if you want or we can take it again at the end of the course together and so with that the breathing mechanics so the breathing mechanics there's two major things nasal breathing so breathing with your nose instead of your mouth and two breathing with your diaphragm so most people not breathing with your diaphragm looks like this even little normal breaths while you're at your desk. And you barely notice it's happening, but what you're doing there is, so picture your lungs being like a balloon. When you take a breath, they are expanding and filling with air and your body needs to make room for that to expand. And when you're doing this, you're using your traps and your shoulders and your neck muscles to lift up and give those lungs some space. When we have, our diaphragm that was literally designed to do that um, but of course you know I mean it's we've, we've all done it. it you know we're we're raised like you know you want your stomach tucked in looking nice um, and even on movies and shows when you see someone like stressed or exhausted it's like <sighs> and this this is just this is doing all the work for us so when you inhale your stomach should actually fill up with air not, no movement up here, little bit movement in the chest, of course you're filling up all the way. I um, mean, when you exhale, everything sinks back in. So I'll try to rotate this way to show you guys. Um, let's see. So if you have one hand on your chest and one hand on your stomach and you inhale, it should look like very controlled and it is it can be challenging to to get those muscles to do the work again if you're someone that's been breathing 
without activating your diaphragm for a long time. And that is totally fine. And again, that's just a goal to have during this program is to really focus on doing that because these muscles need to, they were not designed to do the work for each breath for, with us. And then our nasal breathing, as you saw there, I was inhaling and exhaling through my nose. There are portions of the breath work down the road where we do breathe in through our nose or out through our mouth or both through our mouth. But for your day-to-day -day function, up to 85% of your maximum heart rate, even when you're working out, you should be breathing in and out through your nose. We have a natural filter in there, which again, with what's going on, is, is very important. And it, bring, it transfers less air so we're not over breathing. When you're breathing through your mouth, you're taking in more oxygen and releasing more CO2 than your body even needs. So breathing through your nose on your daily tasks is overall healthier. It's promoting a good level for when you're exercising of blood flow to the muscles and oxygen to the muscles. It, it keeps everything a lot more controlled and balanced and is absolutely the, the healthiest and correct way of breathing. So breathing through your nose and breathing through your diaphragm. So even when you're taking that bolt score for that last breath, you'll just take a full inhale. Start the time. So that's the breath work. The balanced breathing is five seconds in, five seconds out. If five seconds feels too, too challenging or at the end of the exhale you feel like you're, you really, really need to breathe, drop it down to four seconds, four seconds. Um, and again, with that one, if that one feels too tough, drop it down to three and three, and that is totally fine. It's really just to get familiar with feeling your diaphragm doing the work and breathing through your nose. So one set would look like, inhale, exhale. You can do that sitting up, or you can do it in supine position with your legs up and back flat on the ground. Again, hand on your chest and your stomach to do the inhales and exhales there. Oops. So that is, that is the, the breath work there and that is what we're doing today. Just do that, that count for about 10 minutes. Again, really just focus on, um, on feeling your diaphragm move and breathing through, through your nose. And that's how the breath work will be done today. Really try to get in the zone with that. The next phase um, is the exercise phase. So with that one, we are doing dead bugs and mobility squats. So like I said earlier, it's gonna be five rounds. It's gonna be um, mobility squats, dead bugs, mobility squats, dead bugs. T rest whenever you need, but try to rest at the end of the set. So, um, Squats, dead bugs, then rest, instead of doing squats, rest, dead bugs, if that makes sense. So it's for five rounds. I'm gonna show you guys the form for that. So the mobility squat, we're gonna do involving the breath work. So you're gonna take a full inhale, squeeze the core, so you have a full breath of air and you're squeezing the core, engaging everything here, and you're going to squat down, but deadlift back up. I'm still holding my breath, so to deadlift back up, you pull the hips up first, keeping that back nice and flat. Then you exhale. Inhale. So this is really good for the hips, and again, keeping that core stable and engaging everything and making it a slow, controlled movement and really improving the mobility on both the squat and the hinge movement. If you have a weight or a band and you want to use it, you can do it in two ways. You can either hold it up in a goblet like this for the squat portion and then drop it down for a deadlift or you can have it down the whole time. Squat, deadlift, Exhale, inhale, exhale. Again, really do it nice, slow, and controlled and focus on your hips. See if you can go lower each time or stay longer or you know, keep your back flatter on the deadlift or anything you know, that you just really try to focus on how your body feels. And then the dead bugs are, this is my favorite core movement of all time 
it's such a good way to stabilize your core. So the best way to explain the form is to take how you'd be sitting, driving in a car. You'd have your hands on the steering wheel, your legs straight down, and just keep that position and lay on your back, holding the steering wheel, legs at a good 90 degree angle. Again, with this core engagement, keep that belly button pushed into the ground. Your tailbone is slightly tilted up to keep it all tight and controlled and you're gonna drop opposite limbs to the ground and back up. Left arm, right leg, down. Right arm, left leg, down. Again, slow and controlled, keeping, there should be no way to put your hand under your back. Your back should be tightly pushed into the ground with no arc and you stay nice and stable. So you alternate between those two. Um, for five sets and then after that, I think we do, let's see. And then our recovery for the day is day one of the cold shower. Like I said, it is not freezing cold. Um, really just make it a little bit below warm and breathe through it. And today is really just about touching base with yourself and seeing how you feel. So. I'm sorry, this video was so long that days moving forward will be, will be a lot quicker to explain because we'll already kind of be used to the programming a little bit. So if you guys have any questions, of course, message me and let me know. And today we go live at 10 a.m. So if you want to join with me doing the actual, the whole process, um, hop on at 10 a.m. on the Zoom call. And again, if you have any questions in the meantime, just let me know. All right, good luck.